In this video, I'm going to shine a spotlight on Judah. And with overwhelming evidence, prove that the Lamb of God is not the Lion of Judah. I'll start in Matthew 12, 42. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. That was something that the Lamb of God said about the son of David, of Judah, who sat upon the throne of the Lord over Israel and prospered. Or at least that's the way it's written. 1 Kings 10, 13, and 14. And King Solomon gave unto the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred, three score, and six talents of gold. And did the queen who lived south of Solomon not come to hear the wisdom of him who went a whoring after other gods broke the old covenant and got 666 talents of gold 1 Kings 10 6 and 7 and she said to the king it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom howbeit I believed not the words until I came and mine eyes had seen it and behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. First Chronicles 29.23 Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David his father and prospered. And all Israel obeyed him. Now let's go all the way back to Jacob who David desired to find a tabernacle for, because Jacob, who was ungodly, according to Romans 11.26, was Judah's daddy, of which tribe Solomon committed his whoredoms in. Genesis 32, verses 24-29. to 29. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. So let's get this straight, shall we? The very first time that Israel is mentioned in Genesis is when a man wrestled with Jacob and wrestled him into submission putting his thigh out of joint and told him as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed and that prince of power reminds me of the principalities and powers mentioned in the book of Ephesians Ephesians 6.12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes, principalities, powers, and wrestling have something in common with the rulers of the darkness of this world. Go figure. So anyways, Jacob became Israel by the mouth of a man who gave him power with God. 
And God did call Jacob Israel after the fact. Genesis 49 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Skip down to Judah, verses 8 to 12. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched down as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his foal under the vine, and his ass's colt under the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. So ungodly Jacob said that Judah's brethren, his father's children, shall bow down to him, Judah. And that, in reference to what Jacob said, would befall him in the last days. So Judah couched as a lion and was the generational root of David. And that in sharp contrast to the spiritual root and generational offspring of David. Revelation 22:16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And he did send his angel to testify these things. So let's take a closer look at who Jacob said Judah's father's children would bow to in the last days. According to Genesis 38, Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. His wife's name was Tamar. And Ur was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord slew him, which left Tamar a widow. Genesis 38, 14 to 18. And she put her widow's garments off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is by the way of Timnath, for she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given unto him to wife. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot, because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way, and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What wilt thou give me, that thou mayest come in unto me? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Wilt thou give me a pledge till thou send it? And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, Thy signet and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it her and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. So, he paid the prostitute. And... I'll say that while Judah was looking for a whore, he ended up impregnating the widow of his dead son, who was born of a Canaanite woman. And Perez, ancestor of David and Solomon, was born of Judah and Tamar's copulation. Now let's skip ahead to David of the tribe of Judah, who stuck his penis into Uriah's wife, killed Uriah, and eventually Solomon was born of dead Uriah's wife by the sperm of David. 2 Samuel 12, 7-10 And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, 
I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. David was a liar, a murderer, and an old world male slut. No matter how much, some people worship his image. I'll leave a link for a video named, So Who Lied, God or David, in the description box under this video. Please take a look at that if you haven't seen it. So, to wrap this up, David swore falsely by the Holy Ghost, and Christ asked why the scribes said that Christ is the son of David. Mark 12, 35-37 And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord. And whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. Hebrews 1, verses 13 and 14. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them? who shall be heirs of salvation? Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Acts 2, verses 34 and 35. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. And Lord David, as he was called, made his son, who he called Lord, a priest, after the order of Melchizedek, and would not repent. Psalms 110 verses 1 to 4. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And Christ is our high priest, as it is written, and not David's son Solomon of Judah. Please listen very carefully to what I'm about to read. Hebrews 7, verses 14 to 18. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, Thou art a priest for ever after the order of Melchizedek, for there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. And I know I've said this before. Please bear with me. And I'll say it again. It is far more evident that another priest arose than what? It is far more evident 
that another priest arose than that our Lord sprang out of Judah. And that is exactly what those verses are telling us. Consider what Christ said about the elders in Luke 9.22, saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. He was rejected by the elders. And one of the elders said something in Revelation chapter 5, as I have also mentioned before. Revelation 5, verses 5 to 7. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Again, who sat on the throne of the Lord was of Judah and went a whoring after other gods, people. I'll read it again. First Chronicles 29, 23. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David his father and prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. The kings of the earth say, Hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. As it is written in Revelation, so who sits upon the throne of God? Revelation 3.21 To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. And who rules with the rod of iron? Revelation 2 verses 26 to 28 and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. It is the time of the end, as many of you know. And I have the morning star and an army which does not lose to devils. Revelation 19, verses 11 to 21. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he, had in his, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army. And the beast was taken, 
and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. If you don't know me, get to know a real power that be. This isn't uh, ego talking. This is one who laid down his life unto the death and was given power. I've had uh, people get very upset with the things I say against David and Solomon. But I proved the things that David and Solomon did against God many times over. I will see this thing through to the very end. It's been quite a few years now that I've been making war with the beast. And it's not the conventional type of war, the war that people are used to seeing. This is information backed by God's Spirit that destroys the enemy. So, I just tell my brothers and sisters to know that something good is coming out of all of this. And to those who resist the ordinance of God through a power that be, through a real power that be, I'm not talking about these elected officials of men, those that resist the ordinance of God through a real power that be are damned as it is written. So these false Jews, like is mentioned in Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9, who call themselves Jews and are not, if they continue to resist these things and resist the ordinance of God through a power that be, these people that are looking for goyim slaves to serve them forever, they don't, if they don't come out of that or anyone else, they're damned. That's all they have is this life. That's just the way it is.